Hello, David. I'm delighted to be having that third chat with yourself. How are you? I'm extremely well, and it's great to chat with you again, too. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a pleasure. On my own this time, uh, Steve Evans, he can't make it, but he's told me that he's eagerly waiting on the publication, the actual the paperback, of your latest Mike England novel. When is the big day for violins and candlesticks? It's um, it's actually the 16th of July, so it's coming up Excellent. very, 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 very fast. Yeah. I did. I, I have got, Your publisher sent me a, an ARC copy, which I've thoroughly enjoyed. I was asking Steve, does he want to have a read of that? But he wants the paperback. He wants to feel it in 10 pages. <laughs> yeah. So we, we'll talk more about the books as we go on. But I want to ask, by my reckoning, it's for three years now since retiring as president of the Landscape Institute, coordinating projects well, all over the world. You're just well, as um, quiet a lifestyle now. Well, that's that's the theory, isn't it? After three years from retiring from, from the practice and from previously uh, involvement with the Institute, and you'd think your life would get quiet, you know. You, you never, nobody knows what the retirement is going to be like, yeah. you know. And uh, um, the first thing you think is, I won't be doing so much. Yeah. But of course, that's absolute rubbish. If you talk to everybody, <laughs> that's absolute rubbish. And um, and obviously, in my case, it gave me the opportunity to uh, self-publish the novels I'd already written, mm -hmm. complete the one I'd started while I was doing the day job then do a follow-up, and then the one we're going to talk about later, which is the third third in the series. And they take quite a long time to write. You know, they, um, I think my books are generally, well, your, your, your comment, but I think my books are generally easy to read. Yeah. But they're, I can assure you, they're difficult to plot. <laughs> they're complex to plot. <laughs> and, uh, uh, for example, just to give you an example, the fourth in the series, which I'm writing at the moment, yeah. and I'm three quarters of the way through, exactly three quarters of the way through. And I started the very first time I put a word down on paper was December the 18th. Yeah. So that's, you know, that's six months and I'm three quarters of the way through and it's not finished. It's not edited. It is not, you know, yeah. so it, it's, it's a long process. First draft. What are you about 60,000 words into it? Yeah. Yeah. I'm six. Yeah. Six, 60. 62,000 words in. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we'll talk about more about your, your writing routine mm. as you go on. But just to catch up with the, the retirement, were your last role, you travelled extensively all over the world. Are you still hopping on and off planes now, or are you, are you happy at home? I'm certainly not travelling as much as I used to, yeah. because um, sometimes I would do trips that were seven flights. What? Yeah, well, you know, if you're visiting three, three or four countries yeah. over a, you know, eight day, two week period, um, so yeah, that, that it, it, not always, but that got quite extreme. Uh, I I love traveling, so that wasn't the problem. Yeah, and then you travel for pleasure as well. Now I yeah. just travel for pleasure, but I'm still doing it because I love going places. So it, I go near and far, you know, whether it's popping to Paris or Spain or going a little bit further uh, into the Indian Ocean, uh, I try and get away. I'm trying to get away while I still can, you know, is don't put off. And, you know, if you can travel, travel, you know. Yeah. yeah. I, yeah, I think the, the authenticity of the traveller comes out in, in the writing, I found. And, and last time we chatted about your Mike England debut novels, The Tip of the Iceberg, and This Is Not A Pipe, which myself and Steve thoroughly enjoyed them. Mm -hmm. Tell us about them. There's a lot of travel involved in in the novels. You go all around the world. Yes, the um, I like, if possible, to use places that I've been. I'm lucky. Yeah. I've yeah. I've worked in 13 countries, yeah. and I think I've visited. I think I counted up the other day. I visited 69 countries. Wow. Which, given I'm 70, I had this silly thing with myself <laughs> that I try and visit a country for every year of my life. So I'm one behind. <laughs> I'll blame I'll blame COVID. But yeah. um, uh, so I've been to lots of places, and if you take um, even a cameo appearance in uh, the tip of the iceberg, I set it in Trinidad because I. I worked out over there for, for 15 years on and off. So yeah. I know it well. And even even a little cameo of, I can't remember, was it six pages or something? Um, I still want to use somewhere where I know every street, you know, and every little yeah. bit of rusty 
cor corrugated iron. Um, yeah. And uh, in uh, this is not a pipe. Yeah. It's part of P Colmar in France, where some of it is said, is where I had my French office. Yeah. Southern Spain, I know very well over the years. And I'd recently been to Morocco anyway and stayed in a Riyadh, the, you know, the classic hotel. So I do try and use places if possible hmm. that, I, that I've been to. But um, I'm quite happy to do some research if I need a little yeah. to inject somewhere else. Okay, okay. We, we just mentioned the Mike England books. I also enjoyed the Collation Unit. Have you got any more standalone novels in the planning? Is the, the latest one you're writing now, is this a standalone or another Mike England novel? No, no, this is the, this is the four. So the Collation Unit I wrote in 1995. Right. But, but, but and, and I had an agent and we were trying to get it published, yeah. but I was doing the day job, so it was not my, my priority. Yeah. Um, so I self-published that when I retired. And then I went on to the My Kingdom series um, that, that we've that we've been talking about, and and I've written solidly. I can't say every day, but nearly every day for three years, uh, oh. writing those three and the one that I'm writing, writing now. So I haven't had any time to write anything else, to be honest. And it does take it does take a lot of concentration when you're weaving four or five threads in different places in the world you know it it's all it, at the end it comes together nicely he said yeah. hopefully <laughs> but but, uh, but trust me when you're a third of the way through yeah. it looks like everything is diverging and no. never going to come back together yeah, yeah. so um in answer to your question no i haven't but hmm. when even before i wrote the collation unit i I was changing jobs in, now I've got to work this out. I'm going to say 1979. Yeah. I, I was moving between a job in London and a, and a job in Somerset. And there was a six week gap before I could start at the new place. And it was a glorious summer. Mm -hmm. And I sat out in a garden for six weeks and illustrate, wrote and illustrated a kid's book, a, a, an A4 um, kid's book with a, I went to art college for four years. Oh, so yeah. I, 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 illust I did an illustration on the right-hand side mm. and just wrote some simple text uh, on, on the left-hand side. And I've still got it. Mm. And I sort of still like it. So it's, you know, when something's hovering yeah, in the yeah. back of yeah. it, it's sort of hovering there. <laughs> and if I ever have a gap or I just want to break for six months mm. from the My Kingdom series, I might just, uh, I might just revisit that. Okay. You mentioned the illustrations, all the, the, the book covers. I think they're excellent. They, they all they actually mean something. You know, there's a point related to the plot on the covers. D did you design the book covers? Um, the Originally, when I self-published yeah. uh, yeah. the first two, well, the, the with the collation unit, the first yeah. three, yeah. I, I did them myself because I wanted desperately simple covers because yeah. I'm, I'm, un I'm unknown. So, you know, uh, people are people are not... They're not this. They're not going to be on the shelves of W. H. Smith, you know. So yeah, yeah. I, I wanted them done my way, and I wanted them to reflect the com the simplicity. There were this very subtle things on the covers that re reflected the complexity that was in the books. Yeah. Uh, we may talk in a minute about me joining Hobeck Books, yeah. who are very, you know, an established, excellent uh, independent publisher. Yeah. Um, they, of course come at it from a different angle. We're going up a whole league here. And they suggested that with a relaunch, it would be a great idea to have a new set of covers. Okay. And they suggested Jim Butcher to me, who's done many, 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 many books you would you would have seen and recognized. Mm. And uh, we gave him a free hand, told him what the books were about, yeah. gave him a free hand, and he came up with the, 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 the three covers. Which uh, I can see you got. I can see the one behind you, but I've got the others. The, the others here. Um, if we start with the, uh, I'm just going to hold them up. Okay. I don't know if you can. I don't know if you can see them. Oh, but yeah. one of the themes is this paper. Yeah. A piece of paper that's folding up, yeah. so there's a shadow underneath it. Yeah. So he did. He did that for the tip of the iceberg. Yeah. Because this is not a pipe. Is a bit more. Um, 
what's the word, uh, cryptic. Yeah. It slid the piece of paper into a folder, curved, curled up on the on 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 on, on the, the actual cover. Yeah. And behind your head, I can see the, the tip of the, um, the the violin and candlestick, yeah. which also has this curl curved curved up piece of uh, curled up piece of uh, paper. Okay. And, uh, I just think they're I think they're wonderful. Um, on the tip of the iceberg, he's got the shiny black barrel of oil yeah. dripping down pollution, pollution, and it's and the little black Antarctica just as a little sort of punctuation mark at the bottom. Yeah, and this is not a pipe which is based on the not based. It's um, uh, the title of the Magritte uh, painting. Mm. Uh, this is not a pipe. Yeah. But it was a picture of a pipe, but he argued it wasn't because you couldn't smoke it. So it wasn't a pipe. Right. So um, he just used a little piece of the pipe to stick out uh, of the folder just to hint at it. Yeah. And as you can, as you know, from the cover uh, behind you, um, the violin and candlestick, he I, I all I said to him uh, was, uh, was that I wanted this is about. Um, Two things sticking together and and matching. It's also the name of a another painting which features in 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 the book at an art gallery. Yeah. But this, but that's that's a cubist painting which looks nothing like that. But what I wanted him to do was to get the candlestick and the violin physically to fit together, and the <laughs> curves of the uh, candlestick and the violin fit together. And there's something sensual. Um, almost feminine about the violin, the way it sits in the front. So uh, uh, it's amazing what you can read and see. And yeah, well, you've, read, you've read the book, so, you know. It's an it, excellent, co excellent cover design, so I think. No, I know, but knowing the plot as well, uh, how they yeah, exactly. combine. I've, I've just finished reading an advanced copy of The Violin and Candlestick. Really enjoyed it. Another My Kingdom story. Tell us about yeah. this. I'm, I'm delighted that there's more from this heroine. <laughs> Well, um, I've got to start quickly from the other two. Okay. I start, I only to say, I start with a subject, or maybe two subjects, in fact, very often. There's, take, there's something that's taken my eye, and they become the backdrop. Not They don't have to be a huge part of it, but they have to be the the setting or the, yeah. the in the background. Yeah. So in uh, the tip of the iceberg, it was the Antarctic Treaty. Yeah. And the and the, the the thought that that might be revoked, which I didn't know uh, about until I read the book. To be honest, I'd never heard of this don't. at all. Yeah, most people haven't. And this is not a pipe. Was about Morocco and Algeria, and Algeria having fifth or sixth of the uh, largest reserves of the gas, uh, natural gas. Again, I didn't know. I had no idea of that until reading the book. And, pro and providing whatever it is, eleven percent or more. Of, of Europe's natural gas yeah. but via two pipelines. So my mind just instantly, my very first thought when I read that was, well, what happens if one of those is blown up or whatever? Yeah. That's, yeah. that's not in the book, but yeah. that's where my brain was thinking. Yeah. And after I started writing it, whoever it was, Putin, whoever blew up the Nord Stream <laughs> yeah. one in, in the Baltic or yeah. the uh, uh, sea. Yeah. And at that very moment I started writing, um, Secretary of State Blinken from America yeah. and his and his next uh, uh, his deputy both went to Algeria Oof, and, never said why, and both said what never said why they went there yeah. and President Macron went there about a few weeks later. Yeah. So, uh, sorry, I've, I've wandered off the no so it's of, facts facts mix with fiction. Yeah, the, yeah. The, the the point is that the books are not about that. But they're the little backdrop. So with yeah, the yeah. violin and candlestick, yeah. I I had two two or three themes. One was Bitcoin, mm. about which I know nothing and I do not own any. Mm. I sort of understand Bitcoin trading. It's just something to sell. Yeah. What I can't, couldn't get my head around was how do you find a Bitcoin, these imaginary things that don't exist, you can't touch. Yeah. So I did some research on it and I thought, I can use that as one small thread uh, in a book. Mm. I wanted a book set in the Gulf states, the United Arab Emirates, not just Dubai, Abu Dhabi, but mm. also 
uh, Russell Keimer and Fujera, and in Oman, and in in the tiny little area, very small area, um, which points up to Iran on the Straits of Hormuz, because a third of the world's oil and gas goes through a 25 mile, which is a, basically the Straits of Dover, with imagine uh, having Iran on one side of the Straits of Dover and Oman on the other, and nobody can really agree about control of the uh, shipping yeah. in the middle. And you got third. So these were the, these were some of the threads, as well as I read about Assyria. Now again, a bit like the Antarctic Treaty, who knows anything about Assyria and the Assyrian population that are spread all over the world? So I'm just I just start with these threads, yeah. and then I introduce my kingdom. And I think, what what would Leonard do? to send my kingdom into this arena. Yeah. And then you know the rest. <laughs> <laughs> you need to read the books to find out. <laughs> yeah. so, tell us more about Mike. In the trilogy, she's like a fish out of water. She's a former CIA intelligence analyst, working from, normally working from a desk. And yet her boss, uh, Leonard DeVries. How do you pronounce that? Yeah. Leonard DeVries? Yeah, Leonard DeVries, yeah. Leonard yeah, DeVries. Leonard DeVries. Yeah, he's um, the boss of one of these five eyes bosses. Yeah. He sends it onto the field where she's, as I say, she's a fish out of water, but she picks it up quickly. Her standout description is the three wigs that she wears. Where, where did you get that idea from? Well, the um, as you know, in the um, earlier books, and at the beginning, yeah. she's um, she's in an she's in an accident which actually kills her husband. husband. Yeah. Um, in Holland, Th that that's not part of the books. It's just yeah. the Background. starting point of the book. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, it damaged her leg, and uh, as a consequence, various other things. Her hair basically fell out. Yeah. Um, when it comes to the wigs, funnily enough, and this is not, please don't take this in any oh. sad or morbid way, um, my late wife died of cancer. Ah. And um, and uh, she was incredibly positive. In fact, there are threads of my kingdom or my late wife in my kingdom. No, um, yeah. She would not give up, and she uh, she started to wear wigs, but not. She didn't care really whether she was bald or not. Mm. But she just thought wigs were a bit of fun, you know. Yeah, yeah. Why not? You know, you know, you know, grab what you can. Yeah. So she uh, experimented with a couple of wigs, mm. well, quite a few, and uh, she was quite, you know, quite ballsy. Mm. So I suppose, in a way, that was in the back of my mind. Right. Um, it didn't start there, but yeah. when when Mike um, started to wear wigs, I thought, well, she's quite ballsy. She why doesn't she have a <laughs> black one, a red one, and a blonde one? And um, it sort of reflects her style or, or or mood, which goes from black to very black to incredibly black. Yeah. <laughs> As I mentioned, she, she's like a fish out of water, but she's gaining more and more experience now. Is that going to you going to sort of? Drop the emphasis on that and make him more, more more of a field agent in future future novels. <laughs> well, of course, I'm, I'm I'm writing the one at the moment, <laughs> and um, um, yes is the answer because okay, okay. Um, uh, you know without get, uh, giving any too too much away. Yeah, sure. I also um, I don't want to just write the same format. If you yeah. see what I mean, yeah, yeah. Um, the, the books are very different, as you know, because yes. of their setting and the subject matters. And she's not a field agent in the uh, absolutely standard uh, spy uh, genre. Yeah. She's a rather accidental one. She yeah. just ends up in, ends up in places where she's an analyst, having to do a little bit more than analyze. Mm -hmm. And I thought for the book that the fourth, the one I'm writing now, yeah. I wanted there to be a, a reasonably large change and it is sizable still still her yeah. still the same humor still the same um, subject matters and uh, of interest but there is one major major change and i've also brought back a character oh huh? okay because uh, you you get feedback when you yeah. you know i'm, I'm learning i'm learning yeah. yeah you get feedback as an author you know from readers and um one character who was, I enjoyed writing very, very, very much, but it, it was an incidental character, which was Waz. If you remember, Waz was the security, the in the oh yeah yeah security in 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 this is 
By the Garden of Villa. Yeah, in the Garden of Villa. Yeah. And um, they had quite a good relationship. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, so many people have said, is Waz coming back in the next book? Well, I'd already written the violin and candlestick, and he yeah. wasn't in it because yeah. it, you know, it didn't fit in with what was going on. So I thought, well, okay, the public like Waz, I'll bring him back with her mm. and make a major change. So, yeah, okay. things have got to move on, and the reader wants things to move on. As Definitely. Well, so. The character grows, yeah. I do, I, do, yeah. I do like that Waz character. I always think of him as like the song, strong and silent type until you, see, you get to know him. I, well, a, a line I've just written in the, in, in the new book, uh, um, he, he's, he's the mongoose to a cobra. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, he, he's one of the few people who can handle her yeah. um, because uh, she's, uh, as you know, not easy to handle. Yeah, yeah. I mean, she shouts in my ear the whole time. I mean, I don't actually <laughs> write, I don't write these books. Yeah. I just I just sit at a keyboard and <laughs> this woman shouts at me. To hurry up and type what she's what she's saying and to yeah. get her out of these awful situations. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. I just change the subject slightly. We mentioned um, your previous publisher, self published, Troubadour. Yeah. Now you're with Hobeck Books. I believe you're currently on a blog tour as the images behind me shows. So tell us about joining yeah. Hobeck Hobeck Books. Well, um, it took me 29 years to, to find a, a real publisher as opposed to, um, by the way, Troubadour did a great job, yeah, but yeah. Um, uh, it, it, it's, it's serendipity. It's, it's slightly yeah, luck. Yeah, yeah. I wrote to Rebecca at Hobeck about something. Mm. She just rep replied straight back. They weren't looking for any, another author. Mm. Uh, I wasn't pressing that hard. It was the start of a conversation. But we just clicked, you know, as you do and mm -hmm. with people. We yeah. just clicked and it came from that. And um, they said they would happily uh, publish this violin and candlestick. Mm -hmm. But if they were going to do that, they would want to publish, relaunch the first two in the series because mm -hmm. it's a series. Yeah. Um, so we've just finished the blog tour for the first two, the relaunch, okay. uh, which which went ex uh, extremely well. Um and then, as it says behind you, on the 15th of July to the 23rd, there'll be the blog tour specifically for the new book. And obviously, there's, whereas loads of people had read, well, not loads, I exaggerate. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I would love loads of people to have read the first two. Um, of course, only a select handful like your good self have read the new one. So uh, we shall wait to hear what people say on the 15th. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant news. I, I, something's happened to me as well. I published my book, self-published the same, about six, five or six years ago. Um, a couple of weeks ago, um, a new publisher posted on Twitter, hi, you know, we're looking for submissions. I sent them an email. I've, I've sent, you know, a million of these things. And most of the time, you don't even really get a reply. Or if you do, it's six months down the line. But it was, yes, hi, Terry. Yeah, we're really interested. I'm like, whoa, hang on a sec. So I'm in like a 28-day sort of waiting period now where we're both, you know, thinking about it type of thing. That ends in about 10 days. So touch wood, I'm going to have my novel published by a real traditional oh, publisher. So I, I know exactly how you're feeling there, where you're coming from. Yeah, it's, um, well, I say it was 29 years since I <laughs> I had an agent yeah, who was yeah. taking it around. This is pre-internet pre, uh, yeah, things yeah. we're doing now. This is where you take a physical copy the size of a telephone directory, <laughs> which don't exist anymore either. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. So... Uh, Th those were different days and uh and i was doing the day job as well which yeah. you know but so well done well done Vienna. Well, thanks. Fingers across. yeah cheers cheers i'm touching wood as well yeah <laughs> we mentioned earlier about your writing routine um are you distracted there at all your writing room i was going to ask do you have a writing retreat but have you got a nice pleasant view outside there to... i i do have a pleasant view which i can show you because yeah. uh, uh it's actually a corner of my kitchen which okay. is which is, which is uh, uh, around me like a greenhouse around oh, me in yeah. the corner of the kitchen. The kitchen is behind me. Mm. But right next to me, I've got the River Avon. I have a mill race and the river, which completely distracts me. I sit here <laughs> bake, baking in the sunlight now because the sun's just come out. Yeah. But if I do it very slowly, perhaps you can just see why I get dis why I get distracted. Wow. Yeah, that's a, that's a beautiful view, though. I see the river. 
You can see it, can you? Fields. Do you have, do you have cows in the field? Do you have any other distractions? Oh, There's we have plenty of everything in the field. Yeah. Yeah, we have everything, but mostly deer. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But the the river. Uh, I don't have any pets and kids here, yeah. so the 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 wildlife uh, is very relaxed. Can you so hear the, the river? Opposite... Can you hear the river? Can you hear it? At yes. All? Yeah. Well, because yeah. right next right next to my shoulder, less what well, meter and a half away, yeah. is a mill race. Wow. It's running down on cobbles, yeah. so I can hear it if I open the window. It's uh, it's beautiful. I daydream there for hours all day instead of writing easily. Ah, well, I may have confused daydreaming with writing then. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah. oh, brilliant. Yeah. 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 Oh. So, Dave, it looks like um, at 30 minutes, it looks like it's absolutely disappeared. It's flown by. I feel like I've been oh. chatting to you for about two minutes. <laughs> I do too much. <laughs> no, it's been a pleasure. But finally, final question, and Steve normally asks this. I always ask it at the end. Um, maybe I've, I've asked you this a couple of times, but yeah. now that you're an established author with four titles behind you, would you change your advice for a new writer? What would you suggest? No, I don't think I would. I think um, it's it, it, some of it's obvious. One is don't give up. You know, it's uh, every writer goes through goes through the good times and the bad times um one don't give up depending everybody's character is different so for me i find a way to deal with um moments when i'm not at my most uh, uh creative when it comes to um let's say com uh, dialogue and yeah. my way to deal with that is i write dialogue and text while i'm feeling great and the moment I have a, um, uh, a a dry patch for a few hours or whatever, yeah. I set myself the goal of writing bullet points, just two or three, oh. for each of the chapters ahead. Just yeah. the one or two chapters ahead. Yeah. Somehow it's easier for me to do that than trying to get that perfect text when I'm not, for some reason, not it's not it's not flowing. Yeah. Um, then the next day, say, or the, uh, I go back and read what I've I've written before, build up to speed, hmm. and then hit the first bullet point, and off you go. It, you, I, I would, my advice to a, a, a new writer is devise your own version of that. It won't be the same as mine, but you've got to be able to cope with the good and the bad. You know, you you just don't sit and write the perfect prose yeah. for a year. Doesn't happen. You know, don't fool yourself. It's not going to happen. Oh, that's great advice. It's living a ladder in a way to pull yourself up the next day. Yes, yes. Some yeah. other writers have suggested um, stopping in mid sentence. I don't know if that would work for me, to be honest. Um, you know, three words into the sentence, so that's an easier start in a way. But I like the idea of bullet points. They're easy. You know, you can you can come up with them however you feel. Like I find. Yeah, even if you're, um, I personally don't. I, I've heard that uh, many times. The yeah. um, you know, don't finish at the end of a chapter. Yeah, yeah with a full stop, so yeah. that the next day you just stare at a blank sheet of yeah. paper. Yeah. But I don't have a blank sheet of paper ahead of me because I do a rolling, can I call it a rolling, three, four, five chapters with bullet points. Yeah. So so for tomorrow, I've yeah. just finished a chapter. So tomorrow, I know three, three bullet points yeah. that have to be in the next chapter. Oh, okay. I, I'm making this up, but, you know, Fred yeah, needs yeah. to fly to Japan. Yeah, yeah, that's all it says. Fred needs to fly mm. to Japan. Yeah. So tomorrow morning when I start, yeah. Fred's got to go to Japan. So I'm not staring at a blank piece of paper. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so where, whereas if I'd stopped mid sentence, mm. I, I can see it could work, but it's not personally for me. Yeah, no, I agree. Oh, do you do you plan that? Do, do you write this on a, a notepad, or you straight on the keyboard with the ideas and the bullet points, or do you have a? I, I have. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, snap. <laughs> You have the same, <laughs> exactly the same, yeah. <laughs> and it's and it says December December the eighteenth, twenty twenty three, on the first page. Yeah, yeah, that's there. Are, there are the bullet points. Okay, three, yeah, three bullet points. Chapter, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, of course, they change. The book changes. She shouts in my ear and decides not to go to Japan <laughs> and not to be with Fred. <laughs> you know. But, uh, you have to have a structure, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. But again, other people do it differently and just start on page one and start writing. I, I, 
I think the complexity of in the background of my books it, that would be difficult because you I've timings are everything and yeah, something's yeah. happening in something's happening in Dubai this minute well what time is it in New York you know they can't be singing and dancing you know so yeah. uh, I, I do have to plot it a little bit yeah I suppose it's, it's a controlled organic you give them life but within a controlled environment yeah because the main uh, you know uh, there is a a moment, and I'm sure all writers uh, of fiction have this, where you not just, well, you create a character like My Kingdom, and and from the day I created her, she just took over, so that I I can say she flies to Japan tomorrow. Yeah. For some, I'm, I'm busy typing, yeah. and she'll just go off to the dentist. <laughs> you know, I think, well, I never thought that. She can't go to the dentist. She's going to miss the flight, you know. And yeah, yeah. You think, well, yeah. where, did, where did that come from? You know? yeah. But that, that's the point at which you've created something. Well, it's not real, is it? But you've created That's the magic, though. Like, that's the magic of it. Magic. Because it's belie- she yeah. is believable. Yeah. And she's real. You know, she goes off to the dentist when she should be doing something or whatever. Yeah. Um, whereas if you just planned it all very neatly, you know, it would be um, not very exciting. Yeah. You know? yeah, definitely. So let let things happen. Let things happen. If 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 it works, it leave it in. If it's not, she doesn't go to the dentist. Okay. Okay. <laughs> That's brilliant. <laughs> oh dear, David. As I said, it looks like time's caught up with us, but it's been an absolute okay. pleasure. Let's um let's book for the next one in what six months in advance maybe. Lovely, yeah. Let's do that. Um, I will hopefully by then have finished the fourth, and it will have gone off to the editors in Hobeck. And although it'll be a little way off publishing, um, we could we could catch up. Excellent. Let's do that. But for now, David. Okay. Cheers. Okay. Thank you have a great much. rest of the weekend. Cheers. Thank you.